it's no longer a recovery mission. It's now very, very sadly uh, changed into a, uh, you know, the, uh, a well, good afternoon, looking for the vehicle, Vanessa. the vessel again. Yes, good afternoon to you. Well, uh, I, I like to think so, but um, uh, sadly, I think uh, that's not the case, I'm afraid. Um, what's clear is that they're, they're not going to stop this search and rescue for, in my view, at least 24 hours, perhaps even longer. Uh, bearing in mind they've got all these remotely operating vehicles now able to be deploy, including particularly the French one. Uh, that's particularly the best one for this. Um, they're not going to. They're not going to stop. Uh, I think they'll keep going. There's so many, so many assets there now uh, available, both on its way and at sea out there. Um, and, and I suspect they won't. They won't stop it unless the family comes in and says enough is enough. And, and um, whether they'll do that and when, who knows. But I think they'll keep going as long as they possibly think it's reasonable. And, and, and what will be the, the benchmark or the measurement which will say it's no longer reasonable? Uh, that's a difficult one. I, I, it has to be, um, you know, certainly going 24 hours past the oxygen limit, um, the length of time without any contact, the family's wishes, perhaps uh, uh, certainly d discussions from the various people and stakeholders involved in the search uh, who are using huge amounts of money to do what do this and not getting anywhere or it doesn't appear to be. And I, I think the disappointing thing is really that um, nothing's been made of these um, sonar boy reports that um, uh, came up with these bangs, um, but they were unable to uh, get sufficient cross-fixing from each of the sonar boys to get a triangulation point to actually establish much closer a smaller search area than the one they've got at the moment. And realistically, the only search area they've got is to go with this French um, ROV down to, um, down to the Titanic and the bottom. Uh, and who knows whether they're there or not, but it's, it's very sad and... Um, I suspect we. I suspect it will probably go on, probably till the weekend. I mean, you did say to me yesterday that with great sadness you didn't feel that those rhythmic knocking noises that they felt that they had traced were an indication that uh, the five people in the submersible were banging on the roof. You did say you felt that if they had been, it would have been uh, very much more frequently. You felt there might have been Morse yeah. code involved. You, you just weren't able to, unfortunately, join the kind of hopeful optimism uh, which seemed to be being expressed everywhere else and it looks like you may well have been well, absolutely right unfortunately well i think that's right and i, I, I and unless there was a um a plan with the, with the company that if they did get to this situation they would do it at 30 minute intervals <coughs> uh, we've not heard that nobody suggested that there was a plan so um uh going back on what submariners in these situations have done over a century or so, um, it, it's always been shorter than that. So I, I, if it was me, I'd be doing it every 10 or 15 minutes. And, and the, the conversation that we've had in the, over the last two days about carefully husbanding and saving oxygen and that the fact that these five people, especially the older ones among them, are very experienced and will know exactly how to do this and eke it out. How do you eke it out, actually, in an enclosed well, space it, like that? It, you, you, you turn the oxygen down. You turn, it, you turn the oxygen coming into the compartment down. You, you, you sleep, you lie still, you don't use much energy. Uh, and, and indeed, in, in our submarines, we, we have control of the oxygen level because we make oxygen mm. uh, that, that uh, you can, if you want everybody to go to sleep and you want to be quiet, you turn the oxygen down. Uh, not, not, not to ridiculous levels, obviously, but, but it is possible to eke out the oxygen and they're very experienced. More important to me mm. is the CO2 because... That's the killer, not the lack of well, the ox uh, lack of oxygen is a killer, obviously, but the CO2 is really what would hurt them. And if they've if they've lost electrical power, and the, the CO2 scrubber has not been working for say three days now with um, um, with no power to it, then that that is a real dilemma because there's no other way realistically of getting rid of CO2. Oh dear. I mean, the picture that you paint, and I know you're not trying to do that, Rear Admiral, but, but when you do 
describe in these very concrete terms what's probably going on in there. It's, it's a very bleak and sad picture that we think we're painting, isn't it? Uh, I'm afraid it is. I mean, as I say, I go back and say that they are they are experienced. At least, at least three of them are experienced, mm. uh, and and they will be doing everything in their power to do to do that, as any submariner would be in those situations. You draw on your reserves and your knowledge and your experience and and things you might have had um, had done before. Um, and I I I think they might eke out the oxygen at least 12 hours, maybe a bit longer, but mm. you just don't know. That's the trouble. We don't have enough information to be clear just what they're capable of doing down there. Of course, they'll be very cold. Mm. Um, they, they will certainly um, be needing to get in their sleeping bags or put on more clothes. I don't know how much food they've got because when they originally dived, it was only going to be for eight hours. So there may have been some biscuits and that sort of thing, but I doubt if there was very much food on board either. And certainly in looking at the inside of the, uh, the, um, the submersible, there didn't seem to be too much room for, for food. I mean, this time yesterday, Rear Admiral, you know, so an absolutely essential and vital 24 hours ago, you said that you were, I mean, I'm not sure you were, used the word aghast, but certainly I think concerned by the lack of a backup plan. You said that it was really quite baffling and mind-boggling to think of something so uh, so daring, so precarious, so audacious without a really kind of concrete bona fide backup plan, which you didn't seem to see there at all. Well, if there, if there was one, we've not heard about it. Um, but realistically, I, I was very surprised that they had not, not, did not have either the current vessel, uh, the mothership, or indeed another vessel with a ROV, a, you know, a submersible, unmanned submersible, that was capable of going down straight afterwards or, or whenever there was a problem. And there doesn't seem to be anything... Um, that's been planned for that. I may be wrong, but we haven't. If there is, we haven't heard from it from the Coast Guard reports or anybody else. 